Hello everyone. Welcome to another interesting session here at Code Heroku. At Code Heroku, our mission is to make world-class computer science and engineering education accessible to millions of students, especially in developing countries like India. Today we'll be talking about the trade-off that exists between bias and variance. In today's video, we'll be talking about what is bias, what is variance. We'll also touch upon topics such as what is overfitting, underfitting. Then we'll discuss the concept of the trade-off between bias and variance. We'll take a step back and understand what is the k-nearest neighbor algorithm. Then we'll look into the PIMA Indian Diabetes dataset. This dataset basically has features or parameters such as the insulin level of the patient, their BMI, their skin thickness, etc. And this data set is used to predict if a person has diabetes or not. So using this data set, we will try to understand the concept of the trade-off which is there between bias and variance. What is bias? Bias is basically an error in the model. That is the error that exists between the predicted value of the model and the targeted value. So this basically happens because we don't take into consideration all the parameters or all the features which are there in the data set. Hence, we develop a model which is highly simplified. So this results in the error. How does high bias result in underfitting? Let us first understand a highly biased person. A highly biased person has a very simplistic mindset and they tend to label everything and they don't take into consideration uh, all the parameters. Hence, most of the time their assumptions turn out to be wrong. In the similar manner, a highly biased model also doesn't consider the underlining logic which needs to be captured and hence it doesn't give an accurate value. So you can see this diagram as well. So the data curve is just uh, one degree. So mx plus c. So it's not capturing the entire curve. So if we had increased the polynomial degree, then it would have actually captured all the data and uh, would have given us higher accuracy. What is variance? Variance is the error which is caused due to the algorithm sensitivity to its small fluctuation in the training data set. How does high variance result in overfitting? Basically what happens is high variance model can cause the model to capture even the noise along with the expected output. This usually happens in scenarios where the model is overly complicated. So what happens is that it starts capturing parameters which don't even share a relationship with the expected output. For analogy's sake, let's take this. In, uh, let's take name as an example. So name is usually random, and we shouldn't give it predictive powers. Let's say we have a model, and it starts considering name as a parameter. So it starts predicting that anyone with the name Bob has higher chances of having a particular disease, or let's say has more chances of committing that particular crime just because his name is so and so. That wouldn't be right, and that will lead to the drop in the accuracy of the model. So you can also see this meme where uh, they've made a, a bed look like a person. So uh, many people might fit into it, but then again, the overlying concept of bed gets lost if we start making beds like that. Another scenario which is being described is this diagram. So you can see that uh, this model is trying to capture every single dot. So it's, it's starting to capture even the noise. So even though for a training data set, it might um, give you high accuracy, but when we move on to a test data set, it wouldn't give us very high um, accuracy. What is this trade-off? Basically, we need to find a balance between variance and bias. We need to find a sweet spot such that the model is not underfit. At the same time, we should make sure we don't overtrain the data set, which would result in overfit. 
So you can see in this uh, case of underfit that the model is a very simple curve. It's, it's basically an MX plus C, a straight line graph. And you can also notice that a lot of um, important data are not getting captured here. So we can improve the model by taking into consideration features and parameters which play a vital role in determining the output. To overcome uh, uh, overfitting, we can implement cross-validation. That is, we'll train on many data sets. And then what we do is we take the average of that prediction. Another method to overcome overfitting would be early stopping. So if we get a hunch that we are overtraining it, we should stop earlier. You can notice here that this is a good fit model. So it's not a very simplistic model, which gives a data curve, which is, you know, a straight line. At the same time, it's not a highly complicated model, which is giving us a data curve with a very, very high polynomial degree. So this, you can see that it's capturing the logic that needs to be captured. At the same time, it's not capturing the unnecessary noise. So far, we were discussing about how bias and variance plays a key role in determining the accuracy of the model. Before we move into the demo part, let us briefly discuss about the KNN algorithm, also known as the K nearest neighbor algorithm. So basically, KNN algorithm helps us in identifying K nearest neighbors of this new example and then helps us to classify this future data point as to which class it would most likely belong to. So let's take this diagram for example say. Here we have given k equal to 3. So this new exam, uh, example would be part of B class. Why is that so? Because you can see that there are two data points which are part of class B which are very close to this new example but there's only one which is very close to this new example. So hence, since there are more number of class B data points, uh, we can classify this new example as class B. But if we give the K value equal to seven, that time there'll be a, a shift in the estimation because you can see that there are only um, th uh, three data points which belong to class B, which are very close to this new example but you can see that there are four data points which are very very close to this uh, new example so since four is bigger than three we can classify this new example as a part as a part of class a so what happens if we use k equal to one basically this will result in high variance in our model how so because the model will become highly specific. Although it might give extremely good results when we are dealing with training data set, we cannot guarantee that it will perform in the similar manner when we move to the test data set. What about a very high value for K? Well, this will result in high bias in the model. How so? Because the model will become very extremely generic. If K is very high, right? It will take into consideration many distinct points. So we cannot be sure if it has considered all the possible contributing features correctly or not. Having this understanding in mind, now let us explore how changing the values of K will lead to high bias or high variance in our diabetes prediction example. All right, so now let's try implementing this example using Jupyter Notebook. Our first step would be to import all the required library and packages. Okay. Next would be to read the data set. All right. So basically, you can look into this data set. So we have a column called as outcome, which is a binary output. So it will either tell if the person is expected to have diabetes or not based on a number of parameters like their age, their BMI, skin thickness, blood pressure, and various of other parameters. And then we will assign the X and Y values. Once we have that in place, we will divide the data set into training and test data set. All right. 
So once we have completed all the above steps, we can look into the score or the accuracy of the test data set. So let's first give k equal to 1 and let's see how this model performs. So you can see that this is our score. So it's accuracy of 67%. So this is 70%. So do note that the score is for the test data set. Okay, so basically to improve this accuracy rate, we need to find a K value which is between one to 100. So let us do one thing. Let us take a few possible values of K and fit the model on the training data set. And let's also graphically compute the test score uh, uh, accuracy and also the training score. So that's what we're trying to do here. So we've ranged K from one to 100. Let's run this cell. Right, so this graphically represents our diagram. So you can see here that even though for very low value of K, the training score is extremely high, but then again, the test score is extremely low, right? So somewhere here, you can know that there's good prediction. So even the test score is high and it's consistent. And later on, there's a draw in the test score. So I'm guessing somewhere around 14, maybe 14 would give us a good uh, score. So let's just give the value as, uh, let's just create another cell. you can see that there is an improvement. So in today's tutorial, we basically covered what is bias, variance, what is that trade-off that exists between bias and variance. We also explained the concept of bias variance trade-off using the Pima Indian Diabetes dataset. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you learned something new today. If you liked it, please share it with your friends and also subscribe to our channel.